Hi and welcome back to FPV Tips. Uh, I'm George and today we're going to be talking about motor issues and how to handle them. A while back when I was testing the um, 4S battery on the Gepard Phantom, I had it mounted on top with the um, stock Velcro strap that the quad comes with and that was really not enough to hold the battery in place. So what ended up happening was that the battery just flew off towards the end of my um, test flight, which resulted on burning one of the motors. I had to replace it. But how do we figure out what exactly is the issue? Um, do we have an issue with a motor or an ESC? Um, how do we debug that? Let's find out. Replacing a motor on your quad um, is for the most part fairly a straightforward process, um, but let's go over the small pitfalls and um, caveats here and there that you could stumble upon um, as you go. The first thing when we're dealing with, with, um, with a motor that has an issue um, is we need to figure out, is it really a faulty motor or is it a faulty ESC? Um, most times we're gonna end up just replacing the motor um, when it wouldn't spin up at all or it would spin and just twitch um, which was exactly what was happening in my case so I had a strong reason to believe that I had burned the motor um, after the battery fell off during my 4S battery test ESC issues are not much harder to be figured out or fixed um, but with the growth uh, in popularity of the 4-in-1 ESC boards it has become a bit more cumbersome, maybe even slightly pricier um, to replace the whole board if just one ESC dies because then you have to replace, replace the entire 4-in-1 uh, ESC and flight controller board in most cases um, instead of like it was back in the day just replace a 4 ESC or even these days in some models. In the case of uh, these micro drones though, more often than not, you're gonna have to toss the entire um, board and get a, get a replacement. Um, and then have to resolder um, all the motors manually. But hey, that's the price we pay for um, the redu reduction in weight and the comfort of just having a single board to deal with instead of four separate ES ESC boards. In our case, the more favorable outcome would definitely be if we just had a bad or a broken motor, um, which would make it so much easier to, to replace. You could inspect the motor for signs of damage um, if there are brown parts on the copper wires or um, loose or missing magnets external damage on the motor as well but unless you know what you're doing in most cases you would probably be better off just purchasing a replacement motor that probably would be the faster and easier solution anyway one of the easiest ways to figure it out is to swap it out with another working motor you could just take the motor that twitches disorder it from the pads move it to another one um, and replace it or switch it with another one that actually does work. Um, that way you can definitely validate that if the motor does spin up there, then probably you have some issues with your ESCs. Um, if the motor doesn't spin up even on another path that you actually know that is working with a working motor, then uh, you can be really convinced that uh, your motor is at fault, which is in this case the more desirable outcome. When um, ordering a motor replacement, as always, it's uh, good to keep in mind um, to order ideally the exact same um, brand and motor with the same stator and uh, KV um, values. In my case, uh, I was able to just get another GEP RC um, GR1103 motor at 8000 um, KV, which is exactly what this quad is using. So that was quite um, good. If you have no good options, um, you could also consider at that point, especially if you were um, maybe thinkering, thinking about uh, making a, uh, upgrading your motors on your quad, maybe that's a good, good time to just replace all four instead of just the one and get a motor, the motors that you would prefer flying. But whatever you decide to pick and choose, of course, do be mindful to pick um, something 
that makes sense with the props you're gonna be using and with the battery you're gonna be using on your quad because the least you want is to have to replace also your ESC and flight controller board after you replace your motors with brand new ones that would just wouldn't work and would um, fry your board when working with micros um, in most cases the motors will come with a plug and if your flight controller or ESC board has the same um, plug you can just plug those in and that's all um, in other cases you might have to do some light soldering but usually it's not a big effort in my case the spare motor did come with a plug but as the motors were already directly soldered to the board on the GEP RC Phantom, um, I had to remove the connector from the motor and prep the wires for soldering by stripping the silicone insulation and uh, just a bit and then pre-thin the ends uh, with some solder. We then want to take off the bad motor. Um, you just need to unscrew the mounting screws underneath the motor and desolder the motor wires from the ESC to finally remove the offending motor. It should be a quick job as the wires um, and the pads are very small and they don't require a ton of heat. Um, so just go quick in and out with the soldering iron without spending too much time on the board. When done, do the same with the new motor. Just um, solder in one wire at a time. Um, make sure there is no continuity between the, the pads. Meaning that you don't bridge any, any of them. And that's it, you're almost good to go. However, as always, before we go out flying, um, it's a good idea to test things out and answer a few questions. For example, does the new motor actually work? Um, dead on arrival motors are not really unheard of. Um, and although a rare occurrence, uh, that still does happen. Um, is the motor direction correct? We need to verify that as well. Um, you don't want to try to fly your quad in have it flip out so good to check those things out um, right now so if we google for the bio heli um, configurator we can land on this github page where we can get the latest release of the software download the one for your operating system once you have it you can run the bio heli configurator um, plug in your quad with the micro usb port and select the correct COM port from the drop down here and then click connect. Once we are connected, let's read the ESC setup by clicking the button here, the bottom right. 
And there we have it. Um, this is where you can adjust the direction um, of the motor rotation and flash the ESC um, firmware. You get a normal reverse direction and for 3D flying, um, the bidirectional options as well. Here are some of the available um, firmware options. Uh, I'm not going to get into uh, details about those, but we might make another video in the future regarding flashing the ESC firmware. Uh, don't forget to write your setup once you're, you're ready and you have adjusted the motor direction. And then click disconnect. That's it. And do you have to calibrate your ESCs? Um, chances are probably not nowadays. Um, if you're running D-Shot, the answer is definitely not. Um, no need for calibration. But if you believe that a little calibration never killed nobody, of course, you can use the motors tab in um, beta flight and do that. Um, I've outlined, outlined the process before in a couple of articles. I put links to, to those um, below. But in a nutshell, what you want to do is you want to go for the Betaflight Configurator app, go to the GitHub page, download the executable for your operating system, and then run it. Next, with the props off, plug in your quad and click Connect. We're interested um, in the Motor tab. That's where um, the Motor ESC calibration is done. To do the calibration, you want to take off your props, click the I understand the risk um, slider, then drag the master slider all the way up, plug in your quad, wait for the jingle to complete, then drag the slider all the way down. And that's how you calibrate your ESCs in Betaflight. But generally speaking, that's all there is to it. Of course, make sure you put your um, props on correctly and have fun. Happy flying. I've been very happy to um, finally fix my Gep RC Phantom because it's literally my, uh, my favorite toothpick at the moment. And um, it's been a ton of fun since I was able to um, swap out the motor. I've been flying it even though the conditions are quite suboptimal um, right now with temperatures being roughly between minus two three and plus two three degrees but hey gotta get your fpv fix right thanks for watching guys um subscribe and see you in the next one